Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Karen Fuller. Now today at noon, more reaction from Crawford County and Arkansas's governor after this cell phone video of the brutal arrest went viral this weekend from Crawford County. Also ahead, a career course in firefighting is coming to a Cabot school district. See why one teacher deserves a lot of the credit. And new reports suggest former President Trump took hundreds of classified documents with him when he left the White House. The latest on the FBI search of his home in Florida and where the case stands today. But first, meteorologist Corrales Ortiz is here with a peek at your weather. Corrales, lots of fog this morning, raining pretty hard right now. What can we expect for the rest of the day? Some, yeah, we had some patchy fog this morning. Otherwise, it's just been another gloomy and soggy day for some of us. You saw that cloud cover behind her. It looked very ominous out there. We are actually seeing our first taste of some rain for today. Here's a live look at that radar right now. Thick cloud cover all across the natural state. Peaks of some sunshine, northern portions of the state where they have been pretty much untouched by the rain. But yeah, seeing some more rain make its way up through across central Arkansas. It is scattered in nature and a closer look across downtown Little Rock. We're actually seeing a little bit of a pop up shower right over us uh, as of right now. So we're seeing some light rain, 77 degrees. It's cooling us down because we were at 80 degrees not that long ago. We'll be warming up to around the low 80s this afternoon and seeing another increase in those rain chances into the afternoon afternoon hours. Again, most of our rain chances today will be scattered, not widespread like it's been in southern Arkansas, but I'll let you know when we can finally see a break from this rain in the forecast just ahead. All right, Corrales, thank you. THV 11 is following new developments today into a violent arrest that was caught on camera from Crawford County. Two sheriff's deputies and a Mulberry police officer are now being identified. They are Deputy Zach King Deputy Levi White and Mulberry Police Officer Thel Riddle. All three men are on paid leave pending the investigation. Now the suspect seen in that video is Randall Worcester. He has since been released from custody and has hired two attorneys. They say the video is horrifying, but they are relieved to know that at least someone was there to capture it on video. Governor Hutchinson has seen it too and calls the officer's actions reprehensible. The governor also says the response is not consistent with the training law enforcement receive. I'm obviously glad for my client that someone did pull out their, their camera phone was able to capture this. Otherwise, you know, we may not ever know uh, what happened to him. Well, the challenge is that you can train, you can train, you can train, uh, but you know, officers have to be able to follow that training and put it into practice. Also developing now, the Department of Justice is launching a civil rights investigation into the arrest, and it is separate from the probe by state police. Lawyers for the three officers are asking for the dash cam footage to be released by Mulberry Police, saying it will show much more of the full story. And in a THV 11 update, a man accused of trying to run over Sherwood police officers, prompting them to open fire, is now behind bars and facing even more charges. Antoine Thompson turned himself in and faces charges of aggravated assault. Sherwood officers were responding to the new Brittany apartment Saturday morning. They say they arrived just as Thompson got into a car and started to drive away toward an officer. That officer fired a shot hitting the car, but Thompson did manage to get away. Little Rock police still searching for the third suspect in last week's shooting near the River Market. Investigators are looking for this man, Darian Williams. Officers converged on President Clinton Avenue just outside the Little Rock Chamber of Commerce on Friday afternoon. Bullets hit or grazed several cars and buildings. Police arrested two suspects that day. The people of Little Rock are shaken again by that shooting in the River Market that comes after 17 shootings within a 24 hour span. THV 11 Sarah Horbakowicz shows us how the governor is working to reduce crime. I've lost two relatives to violence. Gun violence is on the rise in central Arkansas, impacting dozens of families every year, including Ida Hooks. I had an 18 year old that was shot, but then I had a granddaughter that died last year at the age of 34. 
Monday, Governor Hutchinson weighed in on crime reduction efforts. I want to uh, go through some of the things that we've done uh, as a state uh, to address uh, violent crime in Arkansas. In the last year, Hutchinson listed he designated $75 million to prison expansion, $1 million to support prosecutor and public defender offices, and recently strengthened parole supervision. There's been a good result of this effort. Not perfect, but it is, it is increasing uh, the supervision of those that are on parole. The results of Hutchinson's stricter parole program today showing more arrests and firearms confiscated since their officer expansion in April. But Reverend Benny Johnson with Arkansas Stop the Violence says it's still not enough. We're not blaming the governor, but we had to come up with some solutions dealing with the ones who had lost loved ones. That's where you start at. As Little Rock homicides stay up over 50% in the last five years, and state police say they're doing what they can. We want the place to be safe, Little Rock, and we work together as a team with the Little Rock Police Department, state police, Pulaski County, to, to, to combat this violence issue. With one goal in mind. Please, try to stop the violence. The governor also announced that he'll be asking the General Assembly for an additional $9 million to support state prosecutors and public defenders. Now to a story that's something you won't find anywhere else in the state of Arkansas. The Cabot School District is planning on offering a firefighting course for students to prepare them for a career. The course starts next school year and would make them ready as soon as they graduate. School officials say it's the only program of its kind in Arkansas, and there's a lot of people involved, of course, including the district, the Cabot Fire Department, the Department of Education, the Arkansas Fire Training Academy, and SAU Tech in Camden. But it all focuses around one teacher, Ryan Collins. It's like pouring back into the kids like my teachers poured into me and I mean if there was a program like this whenever I was in high school I would not have been a nurse I would have been a firefighter 100% and so uh, you know that's stuff like that is what you know makes me do what I do so and Colin spent the last few weeks learning the ropes from the Cabot Fire Department also he can pass that along to his students and there are apparently plenty interested already former President Trump has filed a new lawsuit against the Department of Justice. That's after the FBI agent seized documents from his Mar-a-Lago home in Florida. Trinity Chavez has those details. Former President Donald Trump wants to stop federal agents from going through documents seized during the search of his Florida home. Trump filed a lawsuit seeking a special master or third party attorney to be appointed to review the documents. He's also requesting the FBI return any documents that went beyond the scope of the search warrant. It happens sometimes, and I think from the point of view of the Department of Justice and justice itself, as long as it doesn't take too much longer uh, and delay things, that's fine. The Justice Department responded with a statement saying the search was authorized by a federal court upon the required finding of probable cause. Federal Judge Bruce Reinhardt could decide this week whether any portions of the affidavit used to authorize the search warrant can be made public. He's going to try to see and the DOJ is going to try to see if there are some discrete paragraphs that, that, that are actually educational to the public that they can go forward on. A U.S. official tells CBS News that the Justice Department retrieved at least 150 classified documents from boxes Trump handed over to the National Archives earlier this year. The New York Times reports that since federal agents re-engaged with Trump's legal team this summer and then searched his home, that number has climbed with more than 300 documents with classified markings obtained by the Justice Department. We didn't see any indication or explanation about why he still had classified documents after the first turnover of records in February or the subpoena in June, why they kept finding these classified documents every time they came back. A Trump attorney signed a statement in June saying all classified material had been returned, but FBI agents found more classified material in this month's search. Trinity Chavez, CBS News, New York. Now the FBI is questioning a man who may have left two suspicious packages at a federal building in Bluefield, West Virginia Monday. This comes as threats against federal law enforcement officials by far right extremists have ramped up following that FBI search of former President Trump's home two weeks ago. Alex Fredfeld tracks extremism with the Anti-Defamation League. 
we are seeing widespread calls for civil war. Um, there is this sense on the right that the time for politics is over and it is now the time for bullets. And last week, authorities arrested a Pennsylvania man after he threatened to kill FBI agents. The week before that, an Ohio man was killed while attempting to breach the FBI office in Cincinnati. Federal authorities say that same man posted a call to arms on former President Trump's social media site, Truth Social, urging people to be ready for combat. After severe flooding swept through Dallas, moving toward the south, there are still concerns about the flooding that could stay for the rest of this week. More on that coming up after the break. Corrales? Yeah, so they saw some pretty historic flooding there, and we can still see our fair share of flooding concerns across parts of the state. But when can we finally see this rain come to an end? I'll have the details in the forecast just ahead.